welcome back to my channel. I am so excited to be giving you guys a little bit more of just stuff every week. And my goal is to give you a video once a week and to just let you in on my life overseas um, as well as fitness and health tips, maybe some cooking, we'll see how that goes. Not the best chef, but that's just between you and I. Um, and just kind of let you guys in on my faith journey and what is um, what God is growing me through and sharing with you what I'm what I do, I guess. That's what you guys were looking for. So I'm excited to share more with you. Um, so it's morning time here in Japan. It's Friday morning and I am having my cup of joe, okay? Um, never drank coffee before in my life, but here I am at the age of 27, getting into the good old habit. Um, part of it is health reasons, so you guys wanted some health tips. Something that I started doing last year that I felt has really changed my um, physique in small ways. Maybe I just noticed it, I don't know, but I love it, is drinking bulletproof coffee. Um, that is just something that I love. I love Tim Ferriss, if you guys have heard of him. He writes awesome books, check him out. Little plug, don't have any relation to him, but love it. And he talks a lot about the benefits of Bulletproof Coffee. So for the past year or so, I would make, I never drink coffee. Like I don't like any coffee at all. Like to this day, I still can't drink normal coffee, but Bulletproof Coffee, I can drink. Um, so every morning I, drink but bulletproof coffee it's just normal coffee with ghee and mct oil and actually i will plug in maybe right here we'll see how my editing skills go plug in with you um where you can buy a two in combination where you just pour it into your coffee so you don't have to buy them separate because they can get pretty pricey um i'll plug that in for you guys so you can get that info but I start my day with Bulletproof Coffee and we just got our blender set up and everything so I can mix it all the good way, the way that I enjoy drinking it. And I'm just sitting here and I am about to have my quiet time, okay? So, what do I do for my quiet time? Good question. I, for those of you guys that may or may not know, I'm a Christian. I am not ashamed of it. I love the Lord. I have loved him since I was five years old, but we've been on quite the journey together as I've learned what that means and what faith means and how to walk it out amidst life's obstacles. Crazy. Right now, um, I'll be honest, you guys, I do not always get to crack open my Bible every single day, and I wish that I was better at this, so I'm working on being more disciplined in this area. My husband, amazing at it. Um, for me, it's not like an everyday thing. And I will say that I truly believe that you don't necessarily need to be sitting down in scripture every single day to still be able to grow in your, in your faith. I think it's important to continue to have and to strive to make that a priority because that is God's living and active word. Like you wanna know what God says about your life? It is right here. So I believe that that needs to be a priority. However, I feel that or I guess just based off of my experiences, I think that God can speak to us in all kinds of ways. Like when I write, I love to write, I love to journal, I always have, and I truly believe that God has spoken to me in those times when I ask him questions and I feel like he gives me a thought and I'm like, that's in the Bible. So I go look it up and then boom, it's like God is speaking to me through his word. So I really appreciate that there are different ways to enjoy scripture, different ways to enjoy the Lord because he is a relational God. He wants to be in a relationship with you, a friendship, a partnership. He wants to be your go-to person. So right now I am working my way through, um, I have the Bible app um, as you guys can hopefully see there. So what this Bible app is going to do is I just pick different plans that I feel like I need to be reading. Um, there are topical ones. You can pick ones on singleness or marriage or divorce or whatever it may be. And there's also ones like this one that I'm reading. It's the 60 day New Testament journey. So it takes me through the New Testament. Um, so I'm reading that one right now. So I'll just pull it up on my phone, but I prefer to actually read through the actual Bible because I think it's healthy for me to unplug from my phone. Um, so I'll just pull up what I need to do. I'll write it down in my journal and I'll just 
go through my my daily devotional that way that's what I'm doing right now and um, and then I usually process a lot of it through my Instagram posts as you guys have seen um, I talk a lot about my faith there so I'll process what I'm learning by posting on social media which is a really fun way to encourage people and that's kind of how I'm starting my day today so cheers to Friday I'll keep you guys posted on the rest of my day back in action guys so I just read my scripture for the day and I was reading in Matthew 10 and it was talking about well I got a few notes from it um, and one of them I just want to talk to you guys about because I know a lot of us are going through really crazy natural disasters um, and just crazy life changes we look around and we see Hurricane Irma or we see Hurricane Harvey and we see the devastation or for me I'm in Japan and North Korea is shooting missiles across the islands um, there is a lot of opportunity to fear life and death. There is a lot of opportunity to place control in the hands of fear. And something that I read this morning is that, um, you know, it says in chapter 10 verse 26, so have no fear of them. Do not fear those who will kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. And that's like hell. We don't talk about that, right? Like a lot of people don't. It's like a taboo topic to talk about. But I want to point out that scripture because I think it's really easy for me to fear death, to fear destruction, to fear um crazy natural disasters like if an earthquake happens here we've had two since we've moved here and we've only been here a couple weeks um but my husband has always been the one that's like we shouldn't fear natural disasters like if the you know scripture he'll like quote with me about um how i shouldn't have my fear or I shouldn't place fear in, their, in the hands of natural disaster. And I wanna encourage you guys in that way too. I think it's really important to take this scripture and sow it into our hearts, understanding that we should not fear that which can kill the body. We shouldn't fear natural disaster, as hard as that is, because trust me, I, I haven't lived through a crazy hurricane or a crazy earthquake, and I pray I never do, but should I come across that I pray that I'm not afraid of that. I'm not afraid of death because this says that those things can only kill the body. They can't kill my soul. My soul belongs in the hands of the Lord. And what I choose to do with my soul is to say, I choose Jesus. I choose heaven over hell, um, which is complete destruction of body and soul. We have that choice for ourselves. And I just want to encourage you guys that our, sh our fear should never be in man, it should never be in natural disasters, it should be in the one who can destroy either. And that's why Jesus came. And so for me, it's just a really good reminder that regardless of what's going on in the world, regardless of where you fall on political lines or what natural disasters come into your life, at the end of the day, the most important thing is that you know exactly where your soul is going because that is something that that is what we should be afraid of. We should be afraid of that more than we should be afraid of death physically. Um, so if you guys have any questions about that kind of stuff, you can always shoot me an email. I'd love to chat with you. Um, but ultimately pick up a Bible and read about what God says in regards to your soul. Um, for me, that just gives me a lot of hope that no matter what's going on around me, I can stand firm and confident that if my time comes through an earthquake, a hurricane, whatever the case may be, that God is, he holds my soul and that will be eternal. And I know that physical death is not something I should fear. So um, that can give us a lot of peace to continue living despite what circumstances we may face around us. I hope that's encouraging to you guys.